Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Quilting Stars with AQS. I'm so excited to be coming to you from Quilt City USA to talk to one of my newest friends, only known her for a couple of years, a wonderful quilt maker and a wonderful teacher, Margaret Solomon Gunn. How are you, Margaret? I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Oh, thanks so much for being here. I'm so excited to get to talk with you and um, get to know a little bit about your, a little bit more about your work and your space. And it looks like you're enjoying a beautiful day there. I am. I am. It's one of the, um, the perks of being stuck at home is that now that the weather has finally turned and is, is palatable to the outside. And I say that it's probably 75 to 80 right now. Um, you know, I can spend as much time outside as I want. Oh, that, yeah, that sounds wonderful. That's one thing I've been telling folks is if this happened in the winter time, it would have been so much more miserable. So at least we can spend time out in our gardens and enjoy the sunshine. But Liz, it did. <laughs> our spring, our spring came about four weeks ago. Oh, you know, that's so true. For March through mid-May, it's like, ugh, we're still in the house. We had snow in May still. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A little bit. Mother's Day weekend. Wow. Yeah. I'm coming from a privileged place in Kentucky here where it's warm from about March. Well, to I grew up in the South and it's in my blood. Oh. I don't want to be in this climate. It's, I need, I need green year round. <laughs> I know what you, I know where you're coming from. Oh, uh, absolutely. Well, you, at least you have this beautiful green around you right now. Can, can you show us around? I do. And I'm, I'm, I can hardly see myself in this very well, but I'm sitting in my back garden. And one of the things that I really, really love to do is um, get the chance in summer to grow the flowers and you know get the color. And um, a lot of people say maybe that's my inspiration, and they're right because I love. I look around my garden and I can see. Oh, I want to. I want a fabric with that in it and that. You know, and I just I live for it. The, the shades of purple and the shades of orange and you know the more color the merrier and so I thought we'd start out here and I just show you there's not a lot of the irises still in bloom we had a hailstorm a week ago oh sure unbelievable yeah you know every 20 years we get hail and I have hail that pierced holes through all my hostas oh, it was my you know large grape size hail or well between pea and grape and wow. so there's nothing you can do Except you know. go, oh, my flowers. <laughs> well, that's so interesting that you say that about the flowers being your inspiration because knowing the quilts that you make, I can totally see that. Those bright, yeah. um, exuberant, vibrant colors and, and the silk that you so often use, it looks just like flower petals. That's so cool to see. Yeah, you know, it's, it's alive. And if you live in Maine when it feels dead so much of the time, you know, when it does get warm enough to get outside and grow stuff, you're like, oh, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> and at least you can make the quilts and put them around your house. And so at least you feel like you've got flowers around when it's cold and snow yeah, all the time. Yeah, I don't have too many of them in my house, but because they don't, I don't have walls that I can display them on, sure. unfortunately. So, but it doesn't stop me from making them. <laughs> Now we are, I have come into what is, uh, you know, my studio and this is, I feel like the working class because I, I work in the basement and, you know, it's, it's half, um, you know, a nice working space of about 750 square feet, part romper room though. So, you know, That's all right. Like, uh, That's what a lot of us are working with. It, it is, and it's, but, but it's mine, and that's, that's the best of it, really, is that I don't share too much of this with anybody, um, except, you know, the spiders. They like to come out, so, so when I heard, I'm going to turn you around so you can see me, but when I heard a few weeks ago you want to do this interview, I thought, oh boy, you don't know what's down in my studio. It's, it's been three months of quarantine and just feeling mopey and dumpy and doing nothing but making messes. I understand so. that feeling though. I think a lot of us are going through that right now. I've talked to a few different quilters who have, you know, are having trouble getting inspired to do anything because we, everything's stressful and scary. That's, that's kind of how I feel. It's like I, I've ha got all this time on my hands, but I can't really make myself want to do anything. You know, and I, 
I think that's normal. That's not just you. I think we're all feeling that. And that's why we're so happy to be able to come into your home and talk to you and other quilt makers so that we can kind of get a spark of, oh yeah, it's not just me. And we can all, we're all in this together and we can all make something beautiful. So I'm so glad to be able to talk to you, even if you've been feeling a little bit mopey, I have too. But you, but your call about doing this really kind of put a flame under me to I'm going to clean that up. <laughs> and we hauled all kinds of stuff out of here in the last two weeks to take to the dump and, you know, just oh, wow. cleared this, cleared that. I pruned down my stash so that I didn't have, you know, fabric everywhere. And, you know, it's kind of a cleansing feeling to get it back to where maybe I can do something now. I don't know if, if I will or not. I know that feeling. We just did that um, with, a, with a room in our own house actually this weekend and just got everything cleared so that we can work again and maybe feel ready to mm -hmm. go again. So uh, thank you. I feel honored that you did all that work. Well, tell us um, once about this quilt behind you because I, this is something I've not seen before. Nope, and not very many people have, sadly. So when I, when I cleaned up in here, I normally I have all my quilts laying on a pallet on the floor, the ones that are traveling, so they stay flat. And then I roll them up and ship them out. And a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, no, nothing's going anywhere. They don't need to sit there. So I cleaned it up and I saw this one. This is my 2020 finish. And it went to one show in February. And I was like, I'm so sad. You know, I, this is, I'm losing eligibility on when I can show this. And here it is just laying here. No, let's hang it up. So yeah. I stuck it up here behind me. And, uh, I've been videotaping some classes, so I often have a quilt back here, but this is the one that I, I spent months, years working on this, and it's nice to have it up where at least I can see it and enjoy it. And uh, Well, absolutely. It's <laughs> stunning, and I love the dark, uh, the darker fabric in the back really makes the light um, center pop. It's just a beautiful yeah. quilt like all of yours are. Uh, will you tell us a little bit about maybe your inspiration or, or what made you start making um, quilts of this style? Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if you know, but I have done a couple other, car this is a carpenter star, okay. um, or a, a, lone, a modified lone star style yeah. of quilt. And I've done two others. And one of them, of course, was in the book that AQS and I did. Mm -hmm. um, that's, it was the first one. Then there was another one that came after that. And then this one, and there's just something about the way you can place a bunch of patches of different colors together and watch it flow. Let me see if I can, you know, like you, can, you can create design with the way these colors like to bloom. That's absolutely right. Yeah, and, but one of the things with, the evolution of how my quilts have, have been made um, over maybe the last five or six years is I've, I've gradually, or not, maybe not gradually, but I have started putting a lot of silk into my quilts. And I love the silk, um, the silk radiance. And it's sort of an, I think it's an addiction, but you know, combining the silk and the cotton really gives me the best of both worlds. I can get all the color and texture that you get from these these commercial cottons but then I can pair it with the silks to have a great place to show off the quilting because as pretty as all these colorful prints are they don't show any quilting sure sure so that's absolutely right and the silks are you know they really shine with the quilting and, and you're a long arm quilter and um, for those of for those out there who don't know that and the quilting is just stunning um and and to be able to use that silk i have to ask is it harder to work on silk than it would be on a cotton um some people think so but i think maybe it's just the number of years i've been doing it i interface it so that it's not you know like you're playing with a nighty here um, and it, it really isn't. Once it's interfaced, it sews, but what you do have to do is kind of dumb it down a little bit. You can't over piece the, uh, you can't choose an overly complex design sure. and expect to easily get things to match. That's hard because it's a little bit, it's enough thicker that it doesn't do that. that but you know, I often use the silk as the the background so that I can have nice larger areas to show off the quilting so there's not as much piecing to play with so let me show can I show you some of the stuff yes, on this please quilt? do please um, let me see the name of this quilt is called belladonic haze and it the name comes from of all things um, a lyric out of a an old old queen song 
and I am about the biggest fanatic of Queen there could ever be. Um, I grew and, up listening to Queen. I love it. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> um, but the rationale for this is when I started quilting it, it was about a year ago and no more than a year ago and my dad was really sick in the hospital um he died in march of last year and i was like oh i can't do anything and i can't i can't work on this quilt and whatever and and so there comes the name because the belladonic haze is sort of like this hallucinogenic sensation or feeling that you get from a, whatever but from a, a plant but <laughs> when i did finally get into the quilting of it you can see you know some of the stuff the details that you get to see from the uh, where it is on the silks. Oh, um, yeah. I, you know, I kind of got into quilting it finally, and, and I did get it finished up. And it's, I won't say it's typical of a lot of my quilting because I think in a lot of ways it goes too far and over the top, but it was, it's indicative of what life was at the time and what else can you say? So, so one of the things that most people don't realize, of course, that, of course, in honor of Queen, who was my musical inspiration to actually finish it, and trust me, there were hundreds of hours of that coming in my ears. <laughs> it's got the crown on it that's painted on, and it also has a little secret that's, I don't know if we can get close enough to see it, but I have in blue thread across the border um, on my quilting machine, I machine embroidered the names of 36 Queen songs around the perimeter of it. So oh when goodness. it uh, when it eventually gets to come to a show near you, you'll get to see that here we have Fat Bottom Girls. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not enough that people are going to go, what in the world is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's so different and so creative. And I, uh, I want to give you my condolences on the death of your father. And, and I want to say, you know, it, it's very special that something so beautiful and, and like you said, a little bit different for you, maybe even came out of that experience and that quilting is healing for a lot of us. So, so what, a, what a beautiful thing to have come out of that. Yeah, so it was, you know, my that's been a while for my dad, but, you know, the quilt, it takes even longer to get your mojo back. <laughs> sure, and, and that's totally normal. And, and, you know, I was talking with um, Melinda Bula recently, and she also, you know, made a quilt to kind of go through her grief about the fire that she had at her home. And so, you know, quilting is, is a, a complicated and emotional experience. It's not just the art. It's also about the emotions behind it. So thank you for sharing that with us and finding the motivation to, to keep it doing, doing something different. And, you know, yeah. so much of what I do, I consider myself more of that traditional quilter, but um, this is not really traditional and, you know, and it's, it's fun to stretch your wings now and then just a little bit. It absolutely is. I, I want to ask you, I think a lot of people might be wondering, um, do you have a specific type of thread that you like to use on that silk? Um, I use 40 weight polyesters for okay. some of the, the design stuff on it. And I use a lot of silk, underweight silk. Well, how yeah. nice to, to, you can tell, definitely tell that that's um, silk, silky threads in there because it pops, it really shines. Yeah, it shines, it does, it does. So in the process of cleaning out my studio, my stash here, well, you can't see it unless I turn it around. My stash was huge. It was overflowing with, with stuff and, uh, I just went through it and all of these heavy prints, unless I'm making a quilt like the one behind me, I don't use them that much. It's one of those things, you know, I, I go in a store and go, ooh, pretty, pretty, I want some, <laughs> you know. I, I, mean, I, had, I had a lot of them and I finally just said, enough, let's make some use of it. And I have a box here, see box, <laughs> I cut up that stash into as many six and a half inch squares as that it would do. And, and it did a lot because right now I have, last week put together 12 um, donation quilts that I'm gonna get, get quilted up. And oh, people are helping, people are helping me acquire backing fabric for it because I, you know, I never have anything more than a half yard cut on hand. But, um, so I'm gonna get those done this summer. Well, that's uh -huh. nice. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, and that's something that you can do even when, uh, you know, you had said you were feeling a little bit less creative right now, which I am, which we all are, and you can still be quilting for a really good cause. That's great to hear that you'll yeah. be able to do that. And they don't take an immense amount of creativity just to run an edge to edge on them and 
Well, I want to ask, um, can you show us all those ribbons that you have hanging up? I know that you've won a lot of awards at AQS uh, shows and other shows. Yes. Very well earned. I, did it turn around? It did. So in the early days, I had this tiny little mini hanging in our bedroom upstairs. And it had, when it got about eight or 10 ribbons on it, I got the comment from my husband, you know, oh, it's getting a little bit obscene. Don't you think you should move that? <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, fine. All right. So I moved those 10 ribbons downstairs. And well, this is, um, this is one wall. Yeah. Uh, and the other one. Oh my gosh. And the other one. How cool. And I think, wow. if I'm not mistaken, that was the, one of these is the last one that came from your show. Yes, you won Best of Show at the Daytona Beach Show. Right, it's up here somewhere. And that was so special. Um, I, I get to hang those ribbons a lot of times on those quilts. And um, it was the, your violet quilt, the value of violet. Yeah, in my yeah, yeah, and, that's and right. And the, the Best of Show ribbon was this perfect violet ribbon. It was like it was meant to be. It was just it was so nice chosen for that quilt. It was absolutely. You know that I I waffled and hemmed and hawed over going to that show. It's like oh, I really really want to go, and it's the middle of winter, and kids are in school, and coronavirus is nowhere on the horizon. So had that been on the horizon, I probably would have gone. And I was like, nope, I made plans to go to Lancaster instead. <laughs> I know, and I hate that we well, have to cancel this year. Crud. I'm looking forward to, to next year, and I'm hoping that everything, you know, is back to normal, I, I, and we're looking forward to, I'm already planning the classes for next year, so I'm really looking forward to it. I, I hope all of that works out. I am, I am ready. I think people need to, we need to get out and be able to go again. Yes, so. absolutely. Well, can you tell us what's on your machine right now? Yeah. I'd love to know a little bit about that quilt. So this quilt, this is just laying here. It's not actually loaded on the machine. And this is, um, this is the next one that's coming down the pike. It'll be the next one that goes, becomes an official show quilt for me. This is all silk radiance. And um, there's a few pieces of it that were hand dyed, but mostly it's stock pieces. Um, and it's, this is when I say it's hard to, you can't over piece. And the, this is about as much as I really like to piece. And even still, some of this I've had to put other pieces on to cover up where things didn't work real well. It's hard, but it's really colorful. And uh, the machine, the, the long arm quilting on this was just, to me, some of the best I think I've done, and which is, you know, a nice thought that, you know, eventually you hit a point where you'll, you do things without 15 mistakes and, <laughs> um, you know, and <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see it go to show and to get it finished. Although I say that now, I've had three and a half months of nothingness that I could have worked on it and I haven't touched it. I just That's sort of okay. looked, I have to tell I you, looked I have at not been it. productive either. <laughs> no, I just looked at it and, but it, it has had a bit of a, a motivating factor in a lot of ways in that um, when I was doing this, I, I went out one day and started looking for some kind of little lace piece to put on these. Um, and eventually, I have this here just to show you, this is a sample of how these are eventually going to finish with a tiny bit of embroidery and these beads, pearls oh, rather, lovely. just to give it a little bit of twinkle. But I went looking for these laces and for this quilt and came upon this um, Turkish lace that I thought, oh man, that is perfect. I didn't have a place for it, but I bought them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I bought eight of these. Like um, they're they're pretty oh. big. They're like 15 inches. It's a tatted lace. They're made in Istanbul, and lo and behold, when I got them, they're all close enough to the same size. And poof, I started designing on this. Let me see if I can back up enough. I didn't have a place to lay this out, but. Those are um, so stunning. What a beautiful use of that in, in the center of your quilt there. I think that's really, it, really creative. It will once I get it, get it done. So these are all motifs that I've adapted from um, Turkish pottery and various Arabic designs that, you know, the interlocking frame. And every bit of this is, well, almost every bit of it's done by hand. This was done by machine, but um, all hand-turned, hand appliqued. And um, I mean, even these borders are, I did them by hand this time and I'm almost done with it. And this was begun at the beginning of the year. 
and on top of that, what's neat is I, I dyed the fabric for this one too. Oh, you dyed it's it that, yourself. I did. <laughs> you know, and it, it's sort of a, I took the crapshoot approach. I'm not, I'm not a fabric dyer. In fact, I know a lady who, she does wonderful fabric dyeing, but I was like, you know, I'm going to try. Why, why not? You know, I have buckets, have water, let's dye. And, uh, <laughs> so I, I dyed about 20 shades of blue. I, you know, I, I never had it in me to think, well, I should write down the recipe. I should, you know, figure out how I did this. Nope, nope. I'm just going to put it in the bucket and see what comes out. Oh, and except for making about six yards of purple when I was trying to make navy blue, <laughs> and a whole bunch of cool blue shades. <laughs> that definitely doesn't look like um, a first attempt at dyeing or a crap shoot approach. It, it, you did a really incredible job. But you know, it's, um, it's just a, a variety of different gradients that, that give it that sense. And I, can, and I tend to quilt or create designs for tops rather that um, use more of a scrappy approach. Mm -hmm. So rather than, rather than needing to have all these all in one shade, they're in a whole bunch of shades. And if you run out of it, well, you don't know the difference because you just go to the next best shade that you have. Yes, and, and it, yeah. it really gives a lot of dimension to the quilt. And I want yeah. to ask, um, there's, I've noticed a lot of applique, you know, you're known as a long arm quilter, but you said you're doing hand turned applique. There's plenty of piecing. H how long have you been doing um, a, a variety of techniques or are you just sort of picking them up along the way? Um, I, I started out predominantly only as a piecer. You know, you go back 10 years and my quilts are mostly pieced. And uh, in 2009, Oh, bless Karen K. Buckley, man. She, I had done a little applique before that, but took a class with her and man, the light bulbs went off. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, I, I finally decided I liked it. And um, gra I think some of my quilts have a fair bit of applique in them and yeah. others are, you know, a lot. Um, but <laughs> I, in the evening, you know, maybe five or six years ago, it was becoming harder and harder for me to sneak down to my, my basement to, to piece and to work on my own quilts. I had, I was inundated with the client work then. And so I started piecing by hand. I don't know if you remember some of the, uh, the uh, um, Bouquet Royale and the Twisted Sister, they're all hand pieced hexagons, but it was, I was adapting to projects that I could do sitting watching TV upstairs yeah. with the rest of the life of the house. And yeah. Um, and you've and got, you've got a, a few kids, don't you? <laughs> I have sometimes a few too many, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're all teenagers and one of them is probably out of the house way more than he's in the house. Mm. Um, but yeah. Well, I think it's amazing that you're able to balance that in the quilt making. And um, I was really surprised, you know, a lot of people have been quilting 30, 40 years and, and you have not been quilting that long. Can you tell us when you started? I, my first quilt was made in 1987, mm -hmm. 788, that time frame, And it was all, it was pieced and then it was tied. And after that, I gradually started putting a little bit of hand quilting into them to the point where I have several that are exclusively hand quilted. I, one of them that was in the exhibit um, at Daytona, not Daytona, where was my, I had an exhibit last year, maybe yeah. it was Daytona, I can't remember, but um, it, I mean, it's fully, fully hand quilted, not show worthy, but functional. You know, these are, these are house quilt, use quilts. Um, and how long have you been um, working on the long arm? I bought my long arm late in 2009. So See, that's a little what I was bit, thinking of. It's just like yeah. 10 years ago. And, 10 um, years, yeah, 10 years. And um, I just, I don't know, it all just clicked. And uh, I made the first machine, the first quilt I machine quilted that was my own. And I decided, somebody said, hey, you ought to try putting that one in a show. And I went, oh, okay. You know, I'd been to our, our main quilt show and seen things there never really gave too many thoughts about entering it much but I was like oh okay whatever so I entered it and well it won the rookie award and I was <laughs> and you know you get to these quilt shows and you look around and you just there's eye candy everywhere and yeah. it's like, oh I, I I'm I'm cut out for this I like this the challenge the motivation you know the 
trying to get things you know to do better and I don't know where it all went but <laughs> that's it went. <laughs> a lot it went it definitely took off uh, you mm -hmm. know I'm always hearing people say um, that they are afraid to enter one of our contests because they're afraid they're not good enough or they're afraid you know that they haven't been doing it too long and we can see you know you've been long arming for about 10 years and you've had just tremendous success and now you're teaching for us um, our, our students love your classes and um, I just have to say like to everyone out there who might be nervous or who might be afraid to enter just do it just take the leap yeah. um, see what you can do everyone I've talked to has said just enter or, or most people have had a friend in a guild or just or quilt shop or or just another friend say okay, go ahead and try that and so I hope that you know we can be that push for you go ahead and try that just, um, just and enter it somewhere see your work the thing is the thing to see it hanging on a wall or hanging you know behind a drape with the lights on it it's like oh wow neat you know and if anything even if you never want to do it again it does give you you know, food for thought about, oh, well, maybe if I use these colors together and, you know, you, you see things differently when you see what, what some other people do and, you know, and, and then you can just come home like a sponge with all the, that information of, well, I mean, I went to that first show uh, where I had that quilt out and thought, wow, you know, I, I'm surprised I did anything. My quilt's so ugly, but everyone else that uses such bright colors yes my mind had so my head shades of brown and i don't do brown despite what this quilt behind me says i don't do brown and every quilt after that was much brighter much bolder and it's like okay i was scared of the color i was afraid it would offend people but no color color you be yourself and you're going to convey you know you're a better side of you through your quilting than you will if you try to pull out a color that you think somebody else wants you to use. That's absolutely right. Be yourself, do what inspires you and what makes you excited because mm -hmm. that's how you're going to make something that's different from everyone else. So many, a couple of my earlier quilts from a few years ago had a lot of orange in them and this one has a good bit of orange in it too. And Orange is my color and I was scared of it at first and thought nobody wants to look at an orange quilt. <laughs> Oh, I like orange. <laughs> you know, yes. you know um, my I have a little nephew who was uh, about four when we took him to the Paducah show uh, a couple years ago. And there were a couple of his favorite color is orange. So anytime he saw orange in a quilt, he'd go, I like that one. I like that one. And he wanted his picture taken with it. So no, you know, I, no matter what you might think about oh. your color choice, somebody out there is going to love it. That's funny. I my daughter who is she's going on 14. Um, but she's been going to quilt shows with me since she was just about that age. And I would just give her my phone, say, <laughs> okay, just run out the battery, take all the pictures, all the you, pictures like. you want. So you have these pictures with an aspect up angle and they're all purple. <laughs> Oh, how fun. Of course, yeah, you know, you find what you like. Mine is green. I'm a big green fan. Yeah. And, and just what inspires you. And, and that's why, you know, I've been so glad to talk to you and our other friends um, so that everybody can see something out there that makes them want to make something new. And, and I have uh, another question for you. You do, you mentioned that you have a book with AQS and it's called Quilting Inspirations. Yes. yes. Um, and I want to let everyone know if they're interested in taking a look at that, you can get that on shopaqs.com. Um, and can I ask you a little bit about your inspiration to make that book and, and kind of what made you want to put all of that into one place? Um, sure. You know, this was, this goes back a few years. I'm trying to think. Um, I can't really even remember the name of the, your former editor that she approached me and she wanted to do a book about, oh, uh, more of an art table book. Uh, no. Okay, you know, I, I was I was agreeable to you know thinking about this, and until until that time, I really had been against patterning any of my quilts. They were active show quilts. They were all of my my show quilts were original, and I thought, eh, I, I don't know, I'm not I'm not there yet. And somehow, in the process of of working with her, and then you went through some transitioning there at AQS, and the editor that I worked with and we ended up coming down to, well, let's, we're going to do this as a, if I do it, it's going to have the patterns in it and it's going to have to showcase the quilting because that's, that to me, that's my business. That's my livelihood. 
And um, I want people to, I want to touch into both markets of both the piecer as well as the person who, who wants to learn about the quilting. And yeah. so that it kind of progressed along, along those lines. Absolutely. So that, a little bit for everyone. And I know that people who um, pick it up on, at the shows when we have it out are always really excited to look and see what, um, what you have to offer out there. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I, on occasion, I, maybe two or three times a year, I've gotten emails from people sending me, here's my version of the quilt. And I tell you, I don't know how many people really make. Some of these are a little harder quilts to do. And, sure. and I'm always amazed at the fact that they, they do them and they look great. And, and I love to see you when you have them send me pictures of what they've done. It's, it's rewarding. Absolutely. I'm sure it is. I can't imagine putting something out there of my own and then seeing the different ways that people adapt that. It would be very rewarding to see how everyone makes it their own. It's amazing to think that knowing my thought process and design process that went through making it, that I actually was able to create a pattern that somebody else could follow. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm sure that's They're not the most straightforward. I'm sure a lot of people when, uh, you know, teachers out there who first start to do that are very surprised at their ability to do that. Um, and, and that's another thing. You've got to try something new. And uh, I'm really happy that you did. I'm really happy that people are making those quilts. And I'm so excited to see, you know, when I finally get to see these in person um, at a show next year, I'm very much looking forward to it. I, I hope so. I'm, I'm sad. Everything's closed. It's, it's really hard on us, our, our psyche and our as well as our, our livelihood here, but you're so how, is, right. how is Kentucky doing? Kentucky's doing okay. We've had a little bit of a spike again, you know, after, after everything started to open around Memorial Day. Um, yeah. And so, uh, but until then, you know, we had really kind of kept the hospital beds open. Um, so I think that, um, I think we're going to get through it. I just am ready for it to be over. I'm ready for people to feel safe to go out again. Um, right. And, you know, I, I've got a little bit of a pre-existing condition with asthma. And so um, I'm just you know, ready to be out in the world again. I miss the office a lot. <laughs> we, yeah, I, I miss having people be able to go to the office. I still, my husband's been home for three months working here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's hard with, I'm used to having the house to myself and, you know, if I want to sing in the hallway, let me sing in the hallway. <laughs> and I have people go, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a totally normal feeling. And those teenagers that want to eat at any hour of the day, you know, like, oh, come on, do I? I, I have spent um, a couple months, like I, I told you earlier, trying to record a couple of video classes. Sure. And, you know, doing that at home with the furnace running and, you know, down here in the basement, you have, anytime anyone runs the water, you hear that. It's like, oh, come on, nobody's, nobody's hungry at 2.30 in the afternoon. Come on, get out of here. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I've got, my, I've got a dachshund and a lab locked out of this room right now, and I just heard one of them going, oh, why uh -huh. she wants to come in? So I can't imagine with kids and everybody being at home, that's got to be a challenge. Yeah, but you're yeah, doing it well. It's fun. I, yeah, I don't have a choice. Yep. I, I moaned and groaned for a while, and I'm like, what can you do? That's there right. Is a, have to make there is a, a hard likelihood that they're going to be partly home in the fall. Yeah. Maine has taken an overly conservative approach to this. While some of the other New England states are opening up and seeing their rates fall, sure. ours are kind of whole. Our numbers never got over. Right now, we're only at like 2,500 cases, oh, yeah. but they're still kind of keeping us um, secluded. And yeah. there, our staged open up process hasn't fully, you know, we've opened a few things, but you know, it's, it's opening slowly. Like, That's oh, right. I just, you know, I only, I just want to go when I want to go. It's, <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to feel like I have to be here, but yet if I'm here, then I know I'm helping. Yeah, and, and you know, you're healthy. I know the feeling. It's, it's, it's frustrating. And, you know, some of the days I wake up and I'm like, well, same old, same old. <laughs> so. It was today, Thursday or Sunday. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. Exactly right. And, and who needs to know? Right. I, I was like, we slept through the alarm this morning. I'm like, oh, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what do we, need? Gonna come what do we have it for anyway? <laughs> So for those um, out there who are interested, you still do custom quilting, right? If you do customer quilting? I, I do. And, you know, and I'm, 
I'm actively seeking clients because I spent a couple of years paring back my client list because of the increase on teaching. And I, right now, yeah, I'd love to do some more client quotes. I do, I do several, but. How can people get in touch with you or, or is it, can you tell us your website? Yeah. Okay. So my, my business website is called mainly quilts of love. And it's M A I N E L Y. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can put up my email address. Um, they can search me and find me on Facebook as well. That's, I, I have a Facebook um, business page under the same name, as well as just Margaret Solomon Gunn. You can find me that way. Perfect. Um, well, yes, I will, if you're out there and you're interested, definitely check out the website. And um, I wanna thank you so much for being here again. And I have one more question for you before I let you go. Sure. Um, okay. I've been asking a lot of folks, you know, we're all kind of out there trying something new right now. I've been telling people I've been doing some baking, a tiny bit of cross stitch. <laughs> Is there anything other than quilt making that um, you kind of started up in this time of being at home? Well, yeah, the video stuff. Um, in the end of March, I moved my office up to our bedroom and I bought a GoPro camera. I bought a whole bunch of mounts so I can mount it onto my long arm and I learned how to use some video editing software. And, you know, some days it's, you know, it's like a zoo trying to do it here, but, you know, I, I, I feel pretty accomplished that I figured out how to do the, some of these basic technological things, but um, I don't know how to do it live yet, but I'm not sure they'd want to do it live. <laughs> yeah, I have to say live, we started these live and it, it we ran into so many different glitches and so you know some maybe live is a little overrated <laughs> for those who are able to do that yeah. i applaud you yeah i mean you know just little things with the internet and you're like well i can't see anything on a phone how do I, do? I really don't know how they do it but you know kudos off to them let's hope we're only doing it until the end of the year <laughs> Well, I look forward to seeing you next year and having you teach with us. And um, I want to say thank you again for being here. It's been a delight to talk with you um, and get to see some of the things that you're working on. Um, I hope everyone out there feels inspired by, by what you've seen today. And um, again, you can go to mainlyquiltsoflove.com um, and shopaqs.com to get your hands on that book. And what about your videos? Are those going to be up on your website? My videos, my website does list these video classes that are, I'm, I'm teaching them through a private Facebook group. Gotcha. Okay. So they're all on there, as are the other four books that I have that are self-published. Well, wonderful. Um, well, take a look at that. Thank you all for being here. Thank you again, Margaret. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you and to, you know, get to know you these last couple of years. And I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Thanks, Liz. Have a great summer. Oh, you too. And thank you, everyone else. Um, so everyone, if you like this video, be sure to click like and share using the buttons below so your friends can see it. And make sure you like the American Quilter Society Facebook page so that you're the first to see when these videos come out. So once again, from Quilt City USA, this has been Liz and Margaret. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thanks. Bye. Bye.